Good evening. Welcome. This is the Hudson Valley Health Forum, and my name is Dr. Patrick Delamere. I'll be your host for this evening. Of all the programs we've done on CTEC Cable, I think this is the most important. I'd like you to, uh, to tell your friends to watch this program. It'll be on Tuesday and Thursday at 9 o'clock. And the reason is because we're going to be discussing alternative health care. What is alternative health care? The direction of health care in this country today is changing. Now, we all know that. It's putting more responsibility on the patient than ever before. That's financial responsibility. Now, things have to change. The country is moving. But what does that mean to the man on the street? Now, it's okay for the very, very wealthy. They can afford it. But the average American maybe can't afford increase in, uh, on premiums and decrease in services. So what is the answer? Well, it would look like that there are options if we look, for, if we look close for them. Tonight, we're going to be discussing this. We're going to be discussing uh, alternative health care. What is it? What does it do for you? How can it help you save money? What will it do for your lifestyle? And it's a really important program. Our guest tonight is Joe Diaguardi. He's a former member of Congress. He's a per certified public accountant, and he's a patient of ours. And this man has written a book. He has a lot of insight. We're really happy to have you. My pleasure to be here, Pat. Joe has an awful lot of insight into what we're going to be discussing tonight. We're going to be discussing alternative health care, and we'll be discussing a lot of other methods as we go along. And what I'd like to do first, Joe, is let's just let the people know who you are. Now, I mentioned that you were in Congress. You did a term in Congress. You've written a book. Two terms. Two terms in Congress, okay? You're, you've written a book. Uh, you were a sort of, you're the first, uh, first practicing, practicing CPA ever elected to Congress. Okay, so tell us, about your, years. For 200 years. tell us about your background. You came from the Bronx. Well, uh, first of all, when you mentioned uh, I was a patient, I think it's important to know that you don't have to be sick to be a patient. That's and true. I think that starts off why we're even talking about alternative health care. Uh, certainly many people see physicians and, and others because they feel they need it, but others like myself want to stay healthy and want to prepare and want to prevent other things from happening. And um, that's why uh, you and I get together from time to time. But I was born and raised in the, the Bronx, uh, my parents immigrants. I uh, worked my way through high school and college as a, as a waiter. I went to Fordham Prep, uh, Fordham University. I think you went to All Hallows, as a matter. Yes. You we and were, I may we, have we passed rivals. each other on Fordham Road at the same time there we in rivals. the uh, middle late 50s. And basically, we moved to Westchester County in 1957. Uh, my mom and dad uh, accomplished the American dream, buying their own home. They worked very hard. Uh, Who the was family. Your father was from, from Italy? Yes, uh, from mom? the um, Avellino uh, uh, area of Italy, and mom from the Bari area. Um, they worked hard together. They had a grocery store in the, in the Bronx on Tremont Avenue. Uh, as a young man, I worked in that store with my brother and sister. But uh, we were taught early uh, the importance of individual responsibility. Certainly, the family reinforced each other. We looked to others when we needed help, but uh, we always felt that it was important for us to take responsibility for ourselves. Uh, when we moved to Westchester County, I, I continued to uh, uh, go to Fordham University. And then I joined a very large accounting firm, Arthur Anderson, and began my career. Uh, it was 22 years. And at the age of 43, left to run for Congress. You might say uh, another way of accessing the American dream. And at 43, uh, I was able to become a US congressman. So um, I would say that I've been blessed with a pretty um, uh, good life, a uh, pretty full life. I have a family now. My children are, are grown. And um, I'm delighted to be able to be on shows like this, Pat, where I can give people the benefit of my experience, not just as an individual, but in some of the discussions we had in, in public office about the important issue of health care and where it's going. Let me go back to this point now. Uh, we, we were discussing this. The reason we got together was a mutual uh, community service we were involved in. Right. And we that's met each we other. Met. We met each other. But then yes. we discussed that you had an injury back uh, a long time ago. Was it, uh, was it uh, in college? Tell us about yes, that. Yes, it was in college, uh, horsing around with some friends uh, on the football field. We had intramural football. and. Um, you know, a couple of them got out of hand, and, and I uh, had an injury to my upper back that I didn't see as an injury at that time. But as years progressed, and when I was uh, in uh, uh, practicing as a professional, I used to get uh, pains in my upper back. And I guess stress has a way, and when you're working hard and you're trying to succeed yeah. in life, uh, you, stress has a way of, of, of exaggerating uh, pain. 
And um, I decided to see what was uh, going on, and I found that the local YMCA that they had a program for back pain. And here I am in my mid-20s now. And uh, I went there and learned that uh, there are ways to not only deal with problems that you might have structurally in, in, in your body, and structurally we're talking about the bones and the muscles and the ligaments, uh, but that there are ways to prevent that kind of pain. But I also became aware at that point of the importance of uh, chiropractic care, not in substitute for primary health care, but in addition to it. And I think we've got to make that point, Pat, Compliment because it, when yeah. we talk about alternatives, we're not talking about an alternative to your doctor. Right. We're talking about enhancements. Exactly. We're talking about uh, other more, things more that complement yeah. what, what your current doctor is doing for you. But then back in the 70s, you started a program, didn't you, for the company you worked with? Didn't you start a program, uh, an aerobics group? You were ahead of your time. Well, you know, that's probably, if you talk to my mother, she'd say, well, when Joe likes something, he wants everybody to know about it. Well, here it is now in the late 60s, and I'm feeling really good about myself because the local YMCA and White Plains did a pretty good job with their program. And but I was spending the bulk of my time in New York City commuting. So I okay. went to the local Y in New York City next to the firm, and that was the West Side YMCA, and uh, told them about the program up there and met someone who said, you know, we should do that here for executives. So you started this in an yes. accounting firm? It, it, this, no, started this at the YMCA on the West Side, but then brought my partners ah. to exercise with me, and you'll see them on the cover that, that, of the article. And that was back in the 70s? That was back in the early 70s. So you were right. ahead of your time. You started to do uh, alternative health care even back then? Absolutely. In Did fact, the title of the article as you can see, it was published in the firm magazine and then used by the YMCA's is aerobics, a new way of life. And people might say, well, what are aerobics? Well, it's, it's a way of enhancing the body's ability to store oxygen so that when you run, you're able to process oxygen better and uh, it makes you a healthier person as opposed to what you might call isometric exercise, which is lifting weights. That's good too, but I felt aerobics was even better. Okay, so, all in this time, was the neck bothering you off and on or the shoulder? Well, the neck got a lot better because what I was doing uh, in addition or in complement to aerobic exercise which is basically running uh, it was stretching warming up so you've always done that though yes you've always been taking well care I of started stuff. back in the uh, late 20s uh, my when I was uh, in my late 20s and uh, uh, now I'm in my middle so you've 50s taken responsibility all along for your health yes Look, let me t and that's me an important point it's very important uh, individuals must see this as something that enhances the way they feel, their quality of life, and uh, we can provide, people like yourself can provide direction. We can provide information yeah. and direction, but basically it gets back to the individual. You know, my, my mother, uh, you know, she, not well educated, but she gave me the 10 most powerful words in the English language. Which are? And they're only two letters each. When strung together, they go, if it is to be, it is up to me. So oh. in life, I think what, what you have to understand is that in any problem, we as individuals have to be the general partner. Everybody else is the limited partner. If it is to be, we it is up to me. Responsibility. Even in health care. We told you to exercise, you did it. We told you to drink water, you did it. We told you to use ice, you drink did it. Drink a lot of water. Not exactly, just water. Yeah. But you did it. But see yes. now, see the thing is you took a lot of responsibility and then you followed with the direction I gave you. So it wasn't me doing it. We had a partnership here. We did teamwork. Exactly. I put the bones back in place, but you did all the rest. Exactly. Okay, now, if I did that only, it could take weeks and months and months. You're doing tremendous in no time at all. You'd begin to improve in a couple of visits really well. So you took a lot of the responsibility, and you've eaten, you've been eating well for a while, you cut down coffee and things. So you did all this. So what I'm getting at is that unless the patient does that, Joe, it, you, the doctor can no longer take the responsibility of getting the patient well. The patient has to be involved. No question. I think you can give direction. Yes. I think it starts with good information. And, and hopefully uh, in government uh, we can say that that's probably the major role that government can play is to uh, inform people as to what the options are to take care of themselves. So information is important. Uh, but then it requires direction. I got some direction from the YMCA and from exactly. others and from my old friend who used to be a, a chiropractor and, and now from you. But that direction can only go, uh, what you do in the office is limited. But you that direction action. then has to change um, attitude and a way of life so that one continues to act and live in a, in a healthy way. 
And ultimately, uh, this is important because it makes you feel better, you're able to do a lot, and it reduces stress. See, the thing is, the doctor of the 21st century has to be a teacher as well as a treatment person. You can't just treat someone, you gotta teach them. Now, if you can teach them, they'll get better quicker, they'll stay better longer, and when there's another injury, they'll, they'll, they'll improve much quicker, and it's gonna happen in life. Absolutely. You can't stop the injuries, right? What motivated you to do what you did? Well, first of all, everybody wants to feel better. Okay. All right, so it has to start with a, a feeling of, hey, I'd like to do more. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, uh, live uh, a life of quality, not just quantity. And when you engage in a lot of different things, and some stressful things, because when you're a professional, when you're involved in the community, when you're raising a family, when you're trying to make ends meet, there's pressure, there's it stress. Is, yeah. uh, if you are healthy, and healthier, you're able to deal with that stress and you're able to participate in life in a very positive way. So it has to start with that. Number two, when you're healthy, it costs less it to, 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 to uh, have medical care. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of the primary motivations I think today in, in government, uh, or at least the public policy that's being debated right now, uh, is cost because we've seen the cost of, of healthcare go out of, out of sight. And, and we realize the next generation is gonna be saddled with a tremendous burden if we don't deal with it. Well, the individual has that same prob problem in, in the household. How do we contain the cost of healthcare to the individual and the family? Well, preventive care, preventive People maintenance. Taking more responsibility. Taking more responsibility, okay, yes. So, but you've done that. Well, I've tried, yeah, yes. No, 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 no one's but, perfect but, but, at it, but, but we you, all but, should but, try. Did you go out and get information? Did someone teach you? You went to the YMCA? Well, basically, early on, yes. I, so, I got information so, from the YMCA. Then I read an article by uh, Dr. Kenneth Cooley on what aerobics was in the late 60s. At that time, believe it or not, I was smoking. I was smoking a, a pack a day. I don't smoke. I haven't smoked in over 20 years. Neither have I, but, yeah. but basically, by exercising, I realized that there was a contradiction to trying to be a aerobically healthy, storing oxygen, and smoking. And little by little, I dropped it. And then finally, I realized it was not a, uh, okay, so a healthy you, way you of doing things. You to educate yourself, though. Yes. My idea is, what can we do for people today to show them that they really have no other choice? They've got to take care of the situation. I mean, they can't keep uh, uh, paying the bills uh, for health care. They have to start taking more and more responsibility. So my thinking now is that, what can we do? How can we show people what they need to do? Well, they have to do it now, because they can't wait five years from now. They can't wait 10 years from now. In, in, the, in your book, and on chapter five, you made an interesting statement. It was that, um, I thought it was really good. It, you said that, um, uh, the Congressional the, child yeah, abuse. But send the kids the bill. Right. I mean, if we don't do something about this now, our children are not going to be able to afford this bill. Exactly. They can't do it now. So what happens even 20 years from now? So we, we, there's, there's, a, there's a time frame on this. We need to get something. We need to get people educated now. Joe, uh, let's discuss for a few minutes so that people understand uh, alternative health care. Let's discuss uh, some of the... Uh, First of all, what it is it? What, it's not a substitute for good medicine by any means, right? Alternative health care, it, it should complement medicine. Absolutely. Okay, now, and it's been around for a long, long time. It's not new. Not new. It's been in, in Europe for hundreds of years. Absolutely. Okay, well, even the chiropractic concept they, in China, in, in the, that, they had people who walk in the spinal column to manipulate the vertebrae. So that's, that's not new. But in this country, it's relatively new. Um, let's discuss what it is. Now, we know, like, for example, acupuncture would be considered alternative health care. Uh, massage therapy, that's coming along a lot today. That's helping a lot of people. Nutrition, really big in now, really big in this country. Better eating uh, habits, absolutely. Exactly. Uh, exercise. Exercise. Now, a big one on exercise. Exercise has taken an awful lot. So what the, what the country is going to, the country is automatically, they're going that direction. The people want this, okay? So it's, but it isn't something that just started. It's been here for a long, long time, and, and, but not in this country. So um, we know what it is now to some extent. Uh, what, why is it so important nowadays, Joe? Why is, is alternative health care so important to the American public, the guy in the street, the man that's working for a living? Look at it in two ways. From the individual family point of view, it's important because everybody wants to feel good and they want their relatives to feel good. And they don't want to spend too much on, on health care if they can at the family. At the government level, public policy, we're now seeing the debate to balance the budget yes. and we're realizing that the costs of health care have skyrocketed. And if we now project out to the next generation, the next 10 or 20 years, uh, we're seeing that the numbers tell us that the next generation will not be able to afford the current system. That's what this Some budget debate is yeah. all about. Some of the present generation can't <clears throat> afford it. 
The dirty well, people of the country have no insurance at all now. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's why people have debated the need for universal uh, health insurance, and, and that debate is still not yet played out. Uh, if there's any role, by the way, that government should play besides informing the people and giving them options, it's in creating a safety net for those who are not able to help themselves. There'll always be those who are genetically handicapped, there'll always be those who have catastrophic illnesses, and there'll be those who are just not able economically to help themselves. Whatever that small percentage is, government can play a role for them. But I think most people are healthy, most people are able, and I think the idea of alternative health care is to empower the individual. Empower to, the individual. Yes, to, to, to bring it back to individual responsibility, family responsibility, so if one understands that it's easier to um, uh, maintain good health than it is to correct bad health, it's and, and it costs less to maintain good health, then we get into the real reason for alternative health care. Again, not a substitute for your primary physician, but in addition to it, good eating habits, some exercise, and I don't mean running a marathon. You know, when I started the program uh, at Arthur Anderson back in the late 60s or early 70s, uh, you didn't see them running on the Veritano Bridge. That's right. Now, on a Sunday morning, and you look at the oh, annual oh, marathon, yep. tens yep. of thousands of people, it's incredible. Yep. So we can see that things are changing changing in America. There is a realization that exercise is important. Does that mean that we have to run a marathon? No. But there's something that each one of us can do daily. It has to begin. Yeah, it has to begin with us in our households, maybe in our local gym, the YMCA, but there's something that each one of us can do to enhance our health by exercise, by better nutrition, by visiting a chiropractor from time to time, as I do to get some adjustments, because healthcare is not just what's happening to your blood and, and, uh, and, and, and your genes, it's the structure of your body, your bones, well, you, your you, ligaments, you your muscles, and sometimes they go off kilter and they can put stress on the body. You said something in the afternoon, you said that it's cheaper and easier to prevent a problem than to treat a problem. Absolutely. And now that's, that's coming from a person in government, not necessarily a person in the health sphere. A lot of people don't realize that. What's common sense? See, it's but, common but, sense. But see, to you it is. Now, I'm just thinking, what about <clears throat> the people who don't understand that, that it's vitally important to begin to take care of themselves, well, take responsibility? A good example, like, for example, an individual who works in a job, the employer doesn't want the responsibility of paying the bills, so the employer keeps dropping less and less and less of his responsibility. Who picks it up? If the patient doesn't pick it up, then the patient hasn't got coverage. Do you know what I'm saying now? If the individual realizes that they can't afford to get sick, but there are a lot of things they can do to stay well. That's but the key. how do you get into the psyche of the, of the man on the street who's working hard uh, and to teach him that he can do it? There's a chance, that, but he has to make a decision. Well, that's why I commend you for having this show, and that's why I took the time to drive through the snow today to be you here. Thank you it, so much. It, it begins uh, with information. Education. And it begins with public information and education, and uh, this is a good start. But this is not the end. Okay, do you this is just kind of a, a turn on to those who see the common sense and the wisdom in what we're saying, but then they've got to take some additional steps. Okay, do you think the government should be involved with this? <clears throat> or do you think that, that it should be uh, uh, individuals? How, 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 can we, how can we reach the people? Because, you know, this country is growing and, and we're doing tremendous things electronically, we're doing tremendous things. Uh, uh, with computers, what can we do or should it be the government's responsibility? What do you think? Well, I'm a conservative and what that means is that I'd like to see less government in our lives than more. But there's always a role for government to play. But in this area of health care, I see that we need to enhance individual responsibility, promote individual responsibility and involvement, but the government's chief role should be in pointing the way in educating the public as to these alternatives and then creating that safety net for those who are just unable to do it for themselves. Okay, there is a, a, <coughs> an office in Washington for uh, alternative health care uh, that's already been started. And the statistics show now that, um, that in this country that there's people spending more and more money out of their own pocket for alternative health care than for uh, family medicine, for example. So if this is happening, the people are already doing this. Well, and look at the health food stores uh, that have emerged in the last 10 uh, and and 20 growing. years. They're getting bigger and bigger. That's right. And uh, people are not only taking vitamins, uh, they're taking herbs. Even though in Europe, in fact, I've got friends in Germany uh, that take certain herbs like uh, ginkgo biloba and um, 
in Germany they represent that if you take this particular herb it makes you um, uh, think better it enhances your memory now it's being uh, tested to see if it uh, can help on Alzheimer's but here God forbid if you represent anything about an herb FDA comes in and says uh, you cannot sell this with that kind of a label so we have many people in America not even exposed to the information that's being given in Europe I this see. is another way I think that alternative health care has to be improved here that the FDA I think has put too much of a stricture on the information that and, and the medicines and the herbs that Americans have. Do you think that if we could get uh, the local schools just to have educational programs uh, uh, for health care, that you think that more people would take them, or is it going to be coming down to an individual getting sick and then changing? That's a great idea. Uh, how did many adults uh, quit smoking? Uh, because education in the school got to the children where they realized yes. this was not a uh, a healthy thing to do. Uh, it started, I guess, even with marijuana where, you know, just say no, but it also applied to uh, cigarette smoking uh, or chronic cigarette smoking. And those children went home to their parents. That's right. And, and those children had an impact on their parents. So you're right. I think that we must begin uh, with the, the primary schools and expose the children uh, to these alternatives to stay healthy because it is common sense. And, you know, children are smart. They understand things that make sense and those things stick with them and if you can give them kind of a slogan as the one I gave you in the first part of your show if it, it is, is to be to it me. is up to me that's something they'll take home and that's something I think that they will then share with the family and the information from school they'll share with the family okay uh, on a situation here now in alternative health care where we want to educate people uh, if we, if we, what can we do? What can the guy do right now? What do you think, from your point of view now, the man who is already burdened with a heavy health care bill and that he can't afford, the man in the street, um, what can be done right now? Besides, and we, we'll, we'll give him some numbers and we'll tell him how to get other information. But do you see anything that we can do that's for the for the critical right situation right now? Well, I think each individual has to take inventory okay, as to how they're living. One, yeah, it's kind of like Personal a self decision. a self diagnostic. Okay. You know, uh, and, and I think the first thing we have to do is to uh, look at ourselves and say, uh, what are our bad habits? Uh, do we smoke too much? Do we drink too much? Do we much? smoke, period. Or do we smoke, period. Uh, do we um, uh, sit down too much at the office and we don't walk or don't take enough opportunities to walk to the train station in the morning instead of taking a taxi, getting up? 15 minutes earlier, that kind of thing. Walking around the office every now and then. Uh, walking downstairs instead of having lunch in, walking around the block. There are things that we can introduce into our everyday uh, habits that begin to enhance that. So we gotta take stock on how we're living. How do we eat? Do we eat too many foods that are fatty? Uh, do we eat too much starch? Uh, look at ourselves in the mirror. I mean, feeling is one thing, but looking is another. You don't have to be a scientist to realize you may be overweight. I'm not saying five or ten pounds, but there are many people that are way overweight, 30, 40, and 50 pounds. Those people are risking their lives as well as their health, and they've got to do something to change that now. The ones that are slightly overweight, they have to be on notice that there is a balance to play in life, and while eating is good, exercise is also good. So I would say that self, uh, first of all, empowering the individual with this information, but again, a lot of us know uh, and, 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 and can see when we're looking good and when we're not looking good, when we're feeling good and when we're not feeling good. Uh, and then take that inventory to say, how can I take some basic steps to help myself? But then look to professionals like yourself, Pat, because there are things that you know about the body structure, its bone structure, its ligament structure, its muscle structure, and you and the instruments that you have can sometimes see things that we can't. Well, we have right now we have impl implemented it this year a, 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 a team effort in the office, but to educate people. That's the thing of the, 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 the 90, 1996 right now, our goal is to educate people. And we don't do it, uh, they're not gonna be able to keep coping. So what I'm seeing right now is that that's my responsibility. But hopefully people watching this program will ask their doctors to give them better advice. What I'm seeing for the future is that we do have hope and there are a lot of options. And that's the thing we need to teach people that there are options. Many options. Yeah. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. I, I really enjoyed having you on the program, and maybe we'll do it again real soon.